Good afternoon, guys. How are you doing? Everything's good? Good, how about you? Excellent, yes, good, good. Guys, I, I just realized that indeed we have two more classes and then it's the final. So this class, next class on the 4th and 11th is going to be the final, okay? So please remember that uh, it's going to be the same time, same hour, and it's going to, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's easy. So options is going to be very simple. Let's start. Mm, let me show you my screen. Let me move, move this here. Where's my, my pen? Okay, guys. So what we have been doing up to, to last class is working with uh, the put, the calls, you know, doing some strategies, the straddle, etc. Okay. So now let's let's continue working with uh, with this dynamic of understanding what is uh, the minimum prices in order to find a arbitrage opportunity. So that, that's the, the basic idea. So what we have we have considered already the cases of uh, I think we have considered already <clears throat> calls. On the stocks with no dividends that pay no dividends. Do you agree? So we have done that. We have done also the case of puts on the stocks on the stocks that pay no dividends. And then we have done the, the cases of uh, calls on the stocks that pay dividends. And then we have done the case of puts. Oh, sorry, all of them are Europeans. Okay, so this implies European, remember, implies that they simply, you need to wait until maturity to exercise them. And puts on the stocks that pay dividends. Okay, so from here, what we say, guys, is that C should be larger than uh, from here, P should be larger than and here C should be larger than and then finally here So these were the, the cases that we that we discussed the, the, during the previous class. Okay. Let me open the exercise. Well, we, we can do this later. Okay. So now let's go into case number five. So we're going to start talking about now Americans. American options. So case number one in American options is going to be exactly the same. Calls, uh, American calls on the stocks that pay no dividend. So remember that American is early exercise. So this is the idea. You can do early exercise. Okay. Now, remember guys that the call, if we, if we see this one here, the call is always going to be S minus X, E minus R, T minus T, okay? So when are you going to exercise early? If you have a call on the stocks that pay no dividend, when are you going to exercise that? Well, you know, if S minus X, so you exercise if this condition holds. So this is early exercise. And this one here is just wait. But wait until maturity. Okay, and here there is something very interesting, guys. <clears throat> Which one is, is larger? X or X, how is X with respect to X e to the minus R 
So minus R T minus T, which one is larger? This, right? Because this is a discounted value. Do you agree with me? So if this is 100, this is 100 divided by 1.1, for example. So by construction, this is, this is always true. Make sense to you guys? Now, if this is true, what happens in this case? Is, is this possible that S minus X is larger than S minus X to the power E? This never happens. Agree with me or not, guys? Based on this, S minus X being larger than X minus this part here, never happens. Okay, never happens. So that's why, guys, when you have a call, American call, on stocks that pay no dividend, just wait until the end, no early execution or early exercise. So this implies that in this case, just for this case, is exactly the same as a European call option, a call option is exactly the same. Make sense? So when we talk about a call, American call on the stocks that pay no dividends, it is exactly the same as paying a, about an European call on the stocks that pay no dividends. Now the reverse, of course, is gonna happen. So now what happens when we have American <coughs> puts? on the stocks that pay no dividends. I'll copy it for a minute. Okay, so the, the puts are the, the reverse. So the put is going to be X E R T minus T minus S, correct? So it's like, like here. Oh, yes, guys, there is a notation, notation thing here. When we talk about the calls, we, we use cap C. Okay, remember in, in the European, sorry, in Europeans, we use the small C, small P. When we talk American options, is caps C and caps P. Okay, just notations. If you read uh, later papers, when the, the people talk about caps P, <clears throat> we're talking about American puts. Okay, now <clears throat> we are going to exercise early if this happens. Okay, 
Do you agree? If this happens, we exercise early. Again, guys, we know that X is larger than X e to the minus R T minus C, correct? Thank you with me or not? So this implies, guys, that this always holds. Then implies, guys, that European, uh, sorry, American puts on stocks that pay no dividends The best strategy is to early exercise, always. Okay, so now let's go into uh, into another case. Let's go to the case of uh, third case, American call uh, options. Uh, sorry, on stocks that pay dividends. So the, the idea is very simple, guys. So we start with the formula of the call. So the call is going to be larger, must be larger than S minus X T and a minus R T minus T minus D to the E to the minus R T minus T. Okay. And so you, you ask yourself, when I will exercise this one here? Well, I only exercise if S minus X, because I this is what I get now, is larger than all this part here. S minus X Okay, from here, we cancel out these two guys. I can move the, the D to the other side. So D E to the minus R T minus T should be larger than this X goes positive, X minus X E to the minus R T minus T. Okay, we'll do some simplifications here. T to the E minus R T minus T should be larger than X one minus E to the minus R T minus T. Okay, so when D is larger than X to the one minus E minus R T minus T over E to the minus R T minus T. So if I do some simplifications here, guys, D should be larger than X to the, this goes positive up, and this goes minus one. So this is my, my condition. So I will do an early exercise of my call on the stocks that pay dividends. 
if and only if my dividends are larger than this part here. This is my return. This part here is my return on X. Oh, sorry, it's not minus, it's plus here. Sorry, sorry, let, let me delete this part here. This should be a plus, do you agree? Because this negative goes up, so it becomes a positive. Make sense to you? So if it does, can you please do the following? So this is, can you please do number four? I want you to practice this stuff because it's very simple. So now you tell me what happens. When are you going to exercise that American put on a stock that pay dividends? Okay, let's say four minutes. So tell me your condition, remember your put <clears throat> must be larger than Okay. So when are you going to do an early exercise? What is your condition? Two, three minutes, guys. Basically develop the same, the same formula. So one more minute, guys.
Okay, guys, so let's take a look. If I hear early exercise, <clears throat> it basically is, it, I will take S minus X, and I will do this if and only is, if and only if I have this number here is, should be la smaller than, sorry, larger than, correct? That's the only situation in which I should early exercise. So from here, if I cancel these two guys, <clears throat> I can pass the other one here. So it's going to be X minus X E T minus T should be larger than D E <clears throat> R T minus T. From here, guys, if you do that, the same mathematical operations, one minus E uh, minus R T minus T <clears throat> over e to the minus r t minus t should be larger than d, correct? Basically, if I shift this, this condition, d should be smaller than x that multiplies e to the r t minus t minus one. So this is your condition. Let's do one example. Let's assume that D equals 7.5. Let's assume that R equals 10%. The agreement is going to last for six months. Let's assume that X equals 100. And let's assume that you have uh, an American call, obviously a stock pays dividend. So my question is, do you exercise or not? Do you exercise, do you have an early exercise of your American call, yes or no? And do the same, what happens now, do the same analysis if you have an American put the stock pays dividends. So what do you do? Do you early exercise or not? Do you wait until maturity or do you exercise before? Okay, two minutes to do this.
Okay, so what is your answer, guys? Air exercise, not air exercise. It's very straightforward, do you agree? I know already D, and I just need to compare. If it's a call, I need to compare. I need to see if this is true, correct? So let's take a look. Is this true? Is D larger than X? X is equal to 100 times E to the 0 0.1. T minus T is, uh, remember, it's 6 over 12, so it's 0 0.5 minus 1. So what do you get here? 5.127. 127. Okay, and then I simply compare. D equals 7.5 is larger than 5.127. This is correct, correct? Then I early exercise my call. Right? Now, in the case of the put, it's, it's the reverse. A 7.5, I don't need to compute anything else. It's less than 1.27. Nope. Wait until maturity. Make sense? We're going to do the binomial model, guys. That's going to provide you more intuition on how this works. But just remember that D is crucial for, for deciding when to exercise. If you have an American call with the stocks, no dividends, it's exactly the same as an European call with no dividends. If you have an American put with no dividends, you're always going to exercise before. Always. OK? And if you have uh, the, the ones with dividends, these are the, the conditions. Make sense? Okay. So let's do one more case and then we do one, one exercise just to warm up and then we continue. Uh, let's do something that is really interesting and really powerful, guys. Is that the put call parity Remember, they are, the, you know, opposite. One is the face, the head and tails, right? Again? So they should be related. So assume, guys, that we have two portfolios. I have portfolio one, and I have portfolio two. Okay, my portfolio one is going to be my call. And remember, what what is the option? What I what when I go long in a in a call, what I want, I will buy the stock, correct? So this implies that I need to have cash. Correct? So this is my portfolio one. In the portfolio two, if I have a put, what is a put? Is I will have the option to sell. So this implies I need to have the stock. So my second is my second portfolio is going to be based on the stock. Right? Make sense? Call always goes with cash because you're going to buy something. Put always goes with the stock because you're going to sell something. Now, at time zero, so this implies if I buy my call, and I rent, I rent, no, sorry, I lend my cash. So this is the way we represent lending a cash. My put, I buy my put, I buy my stock. Then as usual, guys, what happens in the future if ST is larger than X or ST is smaller than X? So what happens in, in the case of the call? In the case of the call, I exercise and my payoff is going to be ST minus X. And if ST is large, smaller than X, I simply don't exercise. Remember that? So remember, guys, that the call is the max of S minus X comma zero. The put is the max, the reverse of X minus S comma zero. So basically, if S minus X is larger than zero, I exercise, otherwise not. And my savings, when I recover my savings, my savings are going to be simply X. Okay, it's risk-free. So what is my total payoff here? It's going to be ST, and in this case, X. Now, what happens with the second stock? Uh, so let me, let me do a line here, just to make it clear. So if I have ST larger than X, if I have ST smaller than X, what happens when we have a, a, a put and ST is larger than X? So this number here is going to be negative. Correct? This number here is going to be negative, so it's going to be zero. 
And in this case, I exercise the put. And the price of the, of the stock in the future, guys, it doesn't matter where you are, it's, it's always ST. So my payoff is going to be ST. And in this case, my payoff is going to be X. Okay, copy. Okay, you can see the payoffs guys are exactly the same, correct? So if the payoffs are exactly the same, just for non-arbitrage opportunities guys, this implies that minus C minus X, T minus T must be equal to minus P minus S. So basically if I change the sign, C plus X E to the minus R T minus T, must be equal to P plus S. So this is our famous uh, put call parity or, or call put parity. This condition here holds all the time. Okay, so let me create an example for you. Let's assume Professor, sorry, what are we trying to um, achieve in this example? Oh, I, I remember, all these examples are just to find arbitrage opportunities. Oh, remember? Okay. All Always. Right, yeah. Remember, we try to see the, the theory holds, yes or not. If they hold, okay, we, there's no arbitrage opportunity, I cannot do anything. But okay. if there is an arbitrage opportunity, I can take a position, remember we do the strategy, buy the call, sell the stock, etc. Mm -hmm. This is something we'll try to identify here. Okay. okay, so if price of the if the put in the market is three point five, are there arbitrage opportunities? So basically, guys, what is the price of the market of P? If you know all this data, that's what I'm asking to you. So basically, this is your only unknown here in this equation is going to be P. You know all the other, the other pieces and then just compute P, then you compare P with this number here. And if you have arbitrage opportunities, you need to do something. What is your strategy? Got it? But now the strategy is going to be a little more complex because you have calls, puts, and cash. Okay, so you have three, three things to do.
Let me know, guys, for the some more. Ya lo mandaron el documento para iniciar la compra. Sí. Okay, guys, just to see if you are in the, in the right direction. Uh, let me draw something like, like that. Okay, so you know that the call, the, the put call parity guys tells you that C plus X E to the minus R T minus T should be equal to P plus S, okay? So I, I know everything except this one here, just to compare with the P that they are providing here. So C equals four plus 40 E to the minus 0 0.1 times 0 0.5, correct? Six divided by 12, 0 0.5, should be equal to P plus S that is 39. Do you agree with me? And then from here, the only unknown that I have is basically P. So P should be equal to what, guys? Some some of you had this value. Do you have this value, guys? Some of you. I got three point oh five. Three point oh five. Okay, good. So what I do with this P is I compare this P with the market, correct? So with this this P here. So is P that is equal to three point oh five. So remember that according to the theory, guys. The, the minimum price, this P here is the minimum price for a put, correct? So we know that this should be, uh, it should be priced at, uh, sorry, the price of P should be 305. But then I compare with the price of the market and the price of the market is 3.5. Obviously it is overvalued, do you agree? So the market, the market price is overvalued. Agree with me or not, guys? Yes. So as soon as this is overvalued, I have an arbitrage opportunity. Now, the way to think about these arbitrage opportunities, guys, when you have puts, calls, etc., is the following. Okay. What do you do when you have something that is overvalued in the market? You sell it. Do you agree? Because you want to make the difference. Okay. So your strategy is going to be basically, okay, I sell the put. Now, remember that the put, the portfolio of the put always go with the stock. So if you sell the, the, the put, you need to sell also the stock. Okay, and in order to balance the equation, what you need to do is you need, if you sell the put, you need to buy the call. Make sense? So you sell the put. So this basically means that you have an obligation. Remember when you sell an option, you don't have the option. You have the obligation to do something, correct? Then you sell the stock and then you buy the call. So if you sell the put, you're gonna receive positive for you. You're gonna receive 3.5. If you sell the stock, it's basically, this is short sell. I will, I will sell short sell. I will receive from the market, I will receive 39. I, when I buy the call, I will pay four, correct? 
So what is left? 35, 38.5. What I do with this 38.5? I basically lend it at the risk free. When I say lend at a risk free, guys, basically means just deposit this in the bank account. Now, what is interesting is that, that this number is something I need to know. In the future, what is the value of this 38.5? This is going to be 38.5 to the e to the 0 0.1 to the 0 0.5. Correct, this is a future value of 38.5. Can you help me with this, guys? What is this number? Forty point four seven. Forty point four seven. Okay, and then from here, guys, what we do is what happens in one scenario, what happens in another scenario. So let me let me move, let me take a picture here, just to remember the, the numbers. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go to the next page. So now we have two situations. We have what happens if ST. <coughs> if ST is larger than 40, correct? <clears throat> and what happens if ST is smaller than 40? Agree? Now, what happened with ST is larger than 40, guys? So remember, just, just remember, we have sold the put, we have sold the stock, we have bought the call, and we have lent the cash, you agree? So this is what, what we have done. Now, remember also that the put is always going to be max of X minus S comma zero. Uh, and the call is going to be always max of S minus X comma zero. Make sense? Just, just keep this in your mind. Let's go. So what happens when ST is larger than 40, guys? I mean, they, they are going to exercise a call, right? Sorry, no, we exercise, we have bought the call. So we exercise a call. Agree? We exercise the call. So this implies what, guys? I need to pay 40. And remember, ST is larger than 40, so paying 40 is good because I'm making money. I pay the 40 and the other guys don't, uh, they, I, I will say they because I, I'm short. So they is my client, the one that bought my, my put. Don't exercise a call. I will just, that the put, so a zero here. And then I, I recover the money. And I get my 40, what was my money? My money recovered was 40 point 47. Agree with me guys? So what is the net? I end up having 47 cents. I end up having 40, 47 cents as greater than zero. Okay, remember guys, when we exercise the call, so basically here we are buying the stock, correct? Guys, you agree? And what do we do with this stock? We return the stock to close the, the short sell. Make sense to you? So I get the stock. At the beginning, I sold the stock. So that's why I call this short. 
I need to return the stock. So I got the stock and I simply return the stock. Okay, can you give a, give a thought to the, to the second case? So what happens, let me write this here. What happens with ST is smaller than 40? Can you try? Try to, to see what, what's going on there. Okay, what are you guys? Ready? Okay, so what happens with the call? Do we exercise the call or not? No. So basically, uh, let me change this color. So basically, guys, we don't exercise the call. So this implies zero. But now, what happens with the put? They exercise the put. Do you agree? So I, I need to pay, basically I need to pay them minus 40, correct? So and by ex when they exercise the put, so remember the put is the option to sell, correct? When I'm short put, I will buy the stock. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm buying the stock. Agree with me guys? What I do with this stock, return, to close short sell. And then basically what happens, recover my recover my 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 money that I lent. This is 4.47. So I end up with 47 cents positive. My arbitrage opportunity.
Make sense to everyone? Perfect, guys. So now let's go into, into very funny stuff that is pricing. Okay, how do we price uh, a call option, a put option, etc.? And the model we're going to use, guys, is one of the models that is a it's like CAPM is a benchmark for for a stock pricing. The binomial model, guys, is kind of the benchmark for the option pricing. Okay, so let's start doing and understanding this model here. So let's talk about. Now we go into option pricing, okay? And let's talk about the binomial model. So how the binomial model works, guys? If you can just follow me and then I give you, you know, I will stop halfway, then you copy, and then I stop halfway and then you copy, because it's very intuitive. So now, guys, we're going to do only, we are going to be here, and we just have the future two possible outcomes. One, we go up or we go down. That's why it's called binomial. Okay, so let's assume that I have my, my price, my stock now. What can happen tomorrow? It can go up by a factor U or it can go down by a factor D. Okay, now if I see that the world of the, of the call option, let's start with the call option. I can go up, so I will call this CU or I can go down, I will call this CD. Now, and CU is going to be simply the max of US minus X or zero, do you agree? Because if I'm in the upper side, the, the price is going to be US. And if the prices go down, my, my, my cost is going to be the max of DS minus X or zero. Do you agree? So what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to find a way in which we can replicate my portfolio, my, my C, using stocks and borrowing. Okay. And let's define the following. What I will define is that Psi S plus B is what I have now. So Psi is number of shares. So if it's larger than zero, it's long position. And if it's smaller than zero, it's going to be short position. And B is going to be, if it's larger than zero, it's going to, to mean simply I lend money. And if B is smaller than zero, so this implies I borrow money. Okay, so at time T, what is my, my wealth? Okay, my wealth is made of shares. At the, at the market price, and then the money that I have in the bank or the money that I owe to the people. Make sense? So if this is my present, okay, so I will, I will do this. If this is my present, what is going to be my future, guys? In the future, if the prices go up, so this is going to be Psi US, correct? What is the price of my, of my lending or borrowing? the risk-free interest rate. Always is going to be B one plus R. And if the prices of my, of my stocks go down, so it's going to be Psi, the number of the stocks times the price when the prices go down, plus what I have in the bank or what I owe to the people. Got it? So this one here, guys, is called your portfolio replica. And this portfolio replica, guys, must be equivalent to this one here. Because we are talking about the same stuff, do you agree? The call, the underlying of the call is what? S. The underlying of my portfolio is S. The call has cash that is called X. My cash is called B. 
So these two portfolios must be equivalent, must be equal in time. They must move together. They cannot have discrepancies. Make sense? So you don't imagine, for example, that the prices, uh, you don't imagine the volatility of the stock is going down, so it's more stable. You don't imagine that the price of that coal is going to be increasing. That's impossible. And unless there are some arbitrage opportunities. But these two conditions are, are crucial, guys. Okay. And using these two conditions, we are going to start developing the price of the of the coal. Right? Okay, one minute to copy, and then I will show you how easy this works. Okay, a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes, copy because this is important. What, what comes next is just algebra, but it's going to be extremely important. Okay, ready for some very simple algebra. Okay, so let's start. Now, when we have these, these ones here are called trees, guys. Okay, because it has branches and it joins and it has another branches, etc. These, these calls are trees. So by construction, as soon as these two portfolios must be the same, we start from, from, the, from the back, so from the right, and then we start moving to the left. Okay, always this is going to be the strategy. Start from the from the farthest right and then moving to the left All right okay so what i will say okay i can take the first one i know that by construction cu oh, change this one by construction guys cu must be equal to to this part here so psi us plus b1 plus r and of course cd should be equal to psi ds plus b1 plus r, okay? Make sense to you? Now, what I will do is I will do cu minus cd. If I do this, I have a psi common factor, us minus ds, and this part here disappears, correct? What is the, the, the parameter that I'm looking for is psi. So psi from here is going to be simply cu minus cd divided by us minus ds. So I have my first relationship.
Okay. So I know how to compute the number of shares that I will have in my portfolio. Now, using three, I will say three in one. Okay, my next parameter that I need to estimate is B. So I will say Psi, so remember in, in one, so Psi is CU minus CD over U minus D times S, correct? Because I can have a common factor here that multiplies U S plus B one plus R. No, oh, sorry, I'm doing wrong. I'm, I'm, I need to use this one here. This should be one. Yeah, this should be one and this should be two, sorry. Okay, three and one. So, and this should be equal to CU. Agree with me? Let's do some simple algebra, guys. I eliminate these two guys. So I will have UCU minus UCD uh, over U minus D plus B1 plus R equals CU. I, I will move everything to the, to the other side. B1 plus R is equal to U C U minus D C U minus U C U, sorry, minus plus U C D. Hopefully I haven't made a mistake over U minus D. Professor. Yep. Um, is U the same as mu? Uh, no, in this case, it's you. Yeah, we, we have you only. There's no middle. Okay, you. Uh, okay. The, the, the letter you, the letter you. Not me. Okay, not a Greek, just a, just a Arabic you. Uh, hopefully, I haven't made a mistake. So these two are going to disappear. So B is finally equal to. U C D minus D C U over U minus D multiplied by one plus R. Appears to be correct, right? Can you please verify? Yeah, appears, yeah, I would say that. Yeah, it looks correct. Ready? Up to here is clear. So I have already Psi and I have B. So now I know this part here, the, the original point. And then finally I can know C. Agree with me, guys? Now I know Psi S, I know what is Psi formula, I know what is the, the formula for B. And I know that this part here, that T0 that should be equal to C. And C is my price of my call. And then I'm done. Got it? 
So let's let's do this. Hopefully, I can I can do in the same page here. Let me do a line just to to be sure we don't mix up the things. Okay, so here we go. Uh, da, da, da. So I know that psi s plus b should be equal to c, correct? Everyone understands that? This one here should be equal to this one here. Now I know psi, psi equals cu minus cd <coughs> over u minus d that multiplies s times s plus b, b has all this formula here, u c d minus d c u over u minus d one plus r, and this should be equal to c. Okay, let's do some simple algebra guys. This goes with this. Then as I have common factors u d, it's only one plus r that I need to be multiplied. So it's going to be c u one plus r, and I will put the c u minus d, Cu minus Cd uh, one plus R plus Ucd over U minus D <coughs> one plus R. This should be equal to C, correct? So I will simply organize the the Cus. Cu one plus R minus D plus CD U minus one plus R over U minus D one plus R equals C. Correct guys? Simply simple algebra. Now guys, what I will do is I will do a change of variable. So I will call Q. Q is going to be equal to Cu one plus R minus D. So this part here divided by U minus D. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is this part here, oh, sorry, not Cu. Let me delete Cu, Cu doesn't enter, only the components. So basically, basically this part here. Okay, this is what I call Q. Now, what is interesting guys, what is one minus Q? Okay, one minus Q, I simply do one minus Q, one plus R minus D over U minus D. So if I do, this is going to be U minus D minus one plus R, plus D over U minus D. So here the D disappear. And so this is equal to U minus one plus R over U minus D. And so this is one minus Q. And take a look guys, U minus one plus R divided by this one here is one minus Q. You see that? So if this is Q, One minus Q, one minus Q guys is, is this part here. You see that? So finally, I can rewrite this one here. And, and by, by the way, Q guys is called the pseudo probability. So finally, guys, my C is going to be equal to Q Cu plus one minus Q Cd divided by one plus R. So here we go with our final formula. Copy, and then we do one example. So this is one of the formulas we're going to use the most. Right?
Ready? So let me, let's do one example. So you're gonna see how easy the formulas apply. Let's go. Let, let me prepare the following example. Let's assume the following guys. Let's assume that S equals 80. Let's assume that U equals 1.3. Let's assume that D equals 0 0.8. Let's assume that X equals 90. Let's assume that R equals 10% per year. And, uh, my question is, what is the price of the core? Right. So what, what is the price of the code? So that's what I'm trying to, to understand. Okay, are you with me? So we can do this together. Okay, guys, so remember, we have two worlds. We have the world of the underline, and then we have the world of the, of the option. They must be linked together. One cannot go in one direction, the other one cannot go in the other direction. We're talking about the same underline. Both must, must look together, right? must, must move together. So what happens is, okay, if I have my stock price, okay, and my stock price today equals 80, all right, so tomorrow it can have two possible values. It can go up, so it can go 1.380, or it can go down, it can become 0 0.8 or of 80. So this equals, can you help me? Mm. Mm. I'm tired. Yeah, <laughs> can you help me with the calculator here? I, I think this one is 64, that's easy. Uh, so, 104. 104. Perfect. So these are the possible scenarios. The price can go up to 104, the price can go down to 64. And so what is going to be that the world of my C? The world of my C is going to be, can have a CU or can have a CD. CU is going to be the maximum of the of 104 because it's US. So remember this is US and this is DS minus my strike price minus 90 or zero. And CD is going to be the maximum of 64 minus 90 or zero. So what is this value here? The maximum of 104 minus 90 versus zero is 14, right? Guys, do you agree? And the maximum of 64 minus 90, this is a negative number or zero, this is going to be zero. Okay, so now we do our portfolio replica. I, I want to estimate C, so this is my unknown. But I know for my portfolio replica, guys, that psi S plus B should be equal to C. We know that psi equals, uh, was psi, 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 psi equals CU minus CD over uh, um, I take it U minus D times S, correct? This is a formula that we just developed a couple of minutes ago, guys. So CU is going to be 14 minus CD, that is zero. U is 1.3 minus 0 0.8, that multiplies S, that is equal to 80. Can you please help me with this number? Point three five. Point three five. Perfect. Okay, so I have this. Now I know V also. V is going to be um, is UCD 
minus DCU over U minus D and um, one plus R, correct? So if we replace the values here, U is 1.3, that multiplies CD, CD, CD zero, minus D 0 0.8, that multiplies CU, that is 14, divided by 1.3 minus 0 0.8, that multiplies 1.1. Correct, guys, you can help me with that. Negative 20.36. Negative point, 20.36. So what is the sign here? What is the meaning here? Is that we are borrowing money. Okay, so just remember that. So we are borrowing money. Perfect. Once we have all the components, guys, now we know that C should be equal to 0 0.35 multiplied by 18. So I'm, I'm using this one here. Uh, plus B minus 20.36. So what do we obtain here? Uh, 7.64. 7.64. Someone to verify? Confirmed. Perfect. 7.64. So this is the price of the call, guys. So a call that has these characteristics here, this should be the price. Right? Now, let's call this method one. Yeah, the, the method one, we're not going to use method one, but we arrived to this price. Let's use what is called method two. Okay, so this is the method, guys, that we're going to be using all the time. So the method two is based on the following. I know that C equals Q C U plus one minus Q minus Q C D over one plus R, where Q is going to be equal to the where was Q? I have it somewhere. Oh yeah, is one plus R minus D U minus D. And one minus Q equals U minus one plus R uh -uh, over U minus D. So we are going to use these formulas here. And these are the formulas that normally all the books and, and references use, okay? So let's use, let's get familiar with this usage. Okay, so C, well, let's compute. The first thing you need to do, of course, guys, is going to be to compute Q. Q is going to be 1.1 minus 0 0.8 divided by 1.3 minus 0 0.8 and one minus Q. Once we know Q, we know one minus Q, right? Um, someone can help me here. Q is 0 0.6. 0 0.6. So this implies, guys, that 0 0.6 is going to go towards the, the weight of Cu. And of course, 1 minus Q should be 0 0.4. And you see, guys, 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 gives, gives, gives 1. So that's why these guys are called pseudo probabilities, because it satisfies the probability rule, okay, that the sum should be equal to 1. Then once we have this one here, then we are done. So C is going to be equal to 0 0.6 times Cu, 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 or Cu, or 14 plus 0 0.4 times CD, that is zero, divided by 1.1. And so if you do this, I'm pretty sure we are gonna get, if we have, we are correct in here, 
we are going to obtain 7.64. Can you verify that? Great. So please remember, we are going to use method two. Okay, when method one, we don't use it. We use method one only for, for arriving to the to, to method two. Okay, copy, one minute to copy. Ready, guys? Okay. Questions up to now. Okay, so now we know how to price how to price uh, calls. Now let's go to the um, to the case of a put. Okay. Uh, Put prices. Well, you know, believe me, guys, once we know the call, we know the puts. So again, we go, we have S, we have US, we have DS, correct? As usual, the market doesn't change. My put, however, it will change. So now my PU and my PD are going to be, this is the maximum of what and what comma zero, comma zero. So what I write here, guys, X minus ST. Exactly, X minus, you know, ST in, in this case, if I'm up, it's going to be US, correct? And if I'm down, it's going to be DS. Agree with me, guys? Then what we do is my portfolio replica is going to be the same. So in the future, can be Psi US plus D1 plus R, or can be Psi DS plus D1 plus R. Now guys, if you do all the math, exactly the same as the, the, the math that we have done, you're going to arrive to an equation in which the put, I will do only method two, is going to be equal to QPU, plus one minus Q PD divided by one plus R, where Q is going to be one plus R minus D over U minus D, and one minus Q is going to be U minus one plus R over U minus D. Okay, so this is for you guys. 
if you want some extra credit for the second term, you know, I, I almost have your, your exam. So for, for this weekend, I will have your, your grades. Yeah, in general, you're, you're okay, you're good. So if you want the extra credit for the final guys, you need to develop these formulas. Okay, just follow what we have done for the cold case and you're gonna arrive to these formulas. Okay, do exactly the same like the cold case, but just apply for this case. Make sense? Okay, example. Let's use exactly the same data as before. Hey, what was the data? Mm. Give me one second. S81, let me take a picture. Yep. Okay, so let's go, let's go. So the S equals 80. I, I want you to do the, 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 the trees, okay? Always do the trees. Uh, U equals 1.3, D equals 0 0.8. X equals nine zero, R equals ten percent, and that's it. So, what is my my value of my put? Okay, let's say five minutes. Two more minutes, guys.
One more minute, guys. Okay, so we do that the same. So first of all, if you compute Q, Q is exactly the same as before. Do you agree, guys? Do you agree? Nothing has changed. So it's going to be 1.1 minus 0 0.8 divided by 1.3 minus 0 0.8. So this should be equal to 0 0.6. Nothing changed. One minus Q is going to be 0 0.4. And then your, your P is going to be 0 0.6. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before this, before this, we need to do the, the, the stock. So the stock is, we start at 80. We can go 1.3 times 80. So this is equal to 104. Or we can go down 0 0.8 of 80. This can be 64, correct? So my put now is going to be PU and PD. So PU is going to be the maximum of a, this is a 19 minus 104 or zero. So this is going to be zero or the maximum of 90 minus 64 zero. So this is equal to what? 26? Agree? Okay, then finally I have everything. So it's going to be 0 0.6 times zero plus 0 0.4 times 26 divided by 1.1. So what is your price guys? 9.45. 9 9.45. Oh. Makes sense? Okay, so you have exercises, guys, in the, please, if you can start reviewing, if you can start doing, uh, da, da, da. so if you, you're able to do now, basically, you up to number six. You should be able to do up to number six. Number seven also, you can but you know, just try to, if you do until number six, it's okay. If you have questions, just let me know. Okay. Uh, these exercises through mail, correct? Yes, I sent you last week, guys. You have these exercises already. Please okay. be, be careful with that. Okay, forget about number eight. Forget about number eight because we don't have time, I think. Let me, let me, let me think. No, forget about number eight. I will do some of them, okay? We just focus. If you can do up to seven, it's good. But if you do six, you're okay. Okay, remember, guys, that next week, I'm not sorry, next week, no. So we are going to have our final exam last week. Next class is our last class. And then the 11th is going to be our exam during regular, over, uh, regular hours. So we start at six, uh, sorry, we start at 7.30 and we finish more or less at 8.30, nine maximum so we we are perfect okay please do the exercises guys and then we will chat more next week if you have questions just send me emails and then i will be replying to you i will post this video you know last week i was able to do this friday so i will do i will try to do this more this friday too so you have time to to review and do exercises etc make sense everyone okay have a nice week guys take care see Thanks, you later everyone. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.